Hello, we're back on the road again. This time we're going to Boston, Massachusetts, or as the locals call it, Boston. We're gonna drive up to Union Station, which is in DC, and then from there we're gonna take the Amtrak train to Boston. And then once we get there, we're gonna take another train and a local bus to our Airbnb. And I think it will take around seven hours or more for us to get to Boston from Washington, D.C. So it will be a long train ride. Okay, so we just parked our car. It's back there. Now we're going to go to the train station. Okay, so we're up now, and we got up this morning at about 5 a.m., took showers, and got out the door, and we caught a bus just down the street from our Airbnb, took that bus to the train station, and took that train here to downtown, and now we're gonna go see Beacon Hill, and Boston Commons, and Newberry Street. Walking around Beacon Hill, we went here at the Starbucks to have some breakfast and uh, we're just gonna chill out and uh, when we feel ready, we're going out again to, I think the next will be the new Berry Street. So, yeah, here's Nick. Newbury Street, where all of the high-end stores 
complicated. So yeah, we are giving it a try even though we're not, you know, we're still full. So let's have some chocolates. first 11 going from here to Faneuil Hall. The Freedom Trail, it has a long history that stretches way, way back to the storied year of 1951. The Freedom Trail was created in 1951 by a journalist here in Boston, a guy named Bill Schofield. He suggested it in a newspaper column, in a newspaper called the Boston Herald. What he basically suggested was a way to connect some of the historic sites that are here in Boston. So, to the people that are visiting or living here in Boston, might more easily travel between these different historic sites, learning all about this place on some of the same streets and some of the same places as some of the most famous and influential patrons in the history of the United States. So on our tour today, we'll be traveling along the line, visiting some of these sites, talking all about how this area around Boston played such a vital role in the lead up to the War for Independence, which created the United States of America. So, folks, in just a moment, we'll be heading out. Back in my day, folks, when we were very excited about something, like starting a wonderful tour on an absolutely beautiful day like we have today, we might throw our fists in the air and let out a loud, powerful huzzah. So I'd be in your day if you folks would join me on the count of three and start the tour off with a loud, powerful huzzah. I know if there's one thing people love to do in the rain, it's group activities. Here we go. One, two, three, huzzah! huzzah. Wow. Okay, so we just finished our Boston Freedom Trail tour, and it took us to a lot of the different historical sites in Boston, of which there are 16 major sites. It only took us to 11, but the rest of the trail is very explicitly laid out here in the city, so it's easy for you to follow on your own, which we're going to do after we eat lunch. Because it was raining on our tour, we weren't really able to video or take many pictures. And so the 11 uh, sites that we've been to on that tour are first Boston Common, and then Massachusetts State House, Park Street Church, Granary Burying Ground, King's Chapel and King's Chapel Burying Ground, Boston Latin School Site or Benjamin Franklin Statue, um, Old Corner Bookstore, Old South Meeting House, Old State House, Boston Massacre Site, and Faneuil Hall. Um, so we have uh, visited those sites um, through that tour, but we weren't able to um, take video or a lot of um, uh, pictures because that's what Nick said, um, it rained a lot. Like We were wearing our Disney um, coats or raincoats, yeah. So, yeah, and we have umbrella too. So now, um, before we head to the remaining five um, sites, of the Freedom Trail, we have decided to have our lunch first, and we are at Union Oyster House. It says since 1826, so basically this is a very, um, very uh, famous uh, restaurant here in Boston. And uh, yep, we ordered some um, seafood stuff, and yeah, we're gonna show you what we ordered later. So during the tour, we were also given um, a copy of, uh, what do you call it, Independence Declaration. Declaration. Um, uh, obviously, it's not the original one, but yeah, um, I was given a copy of that, so it's like a souvenir.
finished lunch and started the rest of the Freedom Trail tour. And so now we're at the Paul Revere house. <laughs> But let us use a symbol known throughout all of these colonies, fearsome and independent, the symbol of the Mohawk. Rally, patriots, we make our way to Griffin's War. Hip hip! We just finished the Boston Tea Party tour. It's like a live action kind of thing you participate in. They give you little character cards. So obviously we have recorded some of it, but on the museum part where you could see the real, the original box and the, the tea that they have preserved since the original tea party, they were not allowing um, any cameras or video recordings so yeah we have enjoyed that part and now we are walking to the harbor boardwalk was it the harbor boardwalk just the harbor walk i think yeah harbor walk or something so yep we're going there this morning and we're on our way to attend Mass at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross here in Boston and last night we met one of Glasso's friends CJ. Hello CJ. And so now we're gonna go to Mass and spend the rest of the day uh, sightseeing, seeing Harvard and MIT and some of the other stuff in Boston. Yeah and I just want to mention that we ate Boston cream here in Boston. 
Okay. And the one hint that I can tell you is it is within your view right now. <laughs> Most expensive building per square foot. That is modeled after a descendant of John Harvard. Now, some issues with that. John Harvard was a sickly, sickly man. He was known to have a shaky hands, a really bad back, and died at the ripe old age of 31 oh. with no kids. Oh my gosh. So that doesn't look like a healthy guy right there. Yeah. <laughs> we blame bad genetics, but it's pretty unlikely this man is a descendant of a formidable nation. Harvard matured into a more formidable university. Um, and so you can see these parallels often throughout history. Uh, for example, seven you get unlimited swipes per year. You can go there every five day, every dinner, five days a week. You can swipe in and do four meals, five meals, ten you can just Go to, you could just go and breakfast. Freshman 50. Yeah. <laughs> Freshman, <laughs> Freshman 50. <laughs> you might wonder how much this could possibly resemble it. Well, let me tell you, it has the same high arching ceiling, massive wooden tables, beautiful, beautiful stained glass windows, pretty much everything except for the floating candles, but I hear that we are working on putting those in sometime next year. <laughs> said as well, I've been inside and the classrooms a little bit antiquated, one might say. An interesting fact that you'll find is that all of our classrooms will use chalkboards. Huh. Pretty much no. And then we have a few courses like our intro to economics, intro to CS, that'll be like 600 students. Okay. Because <laughs> almost half, like, I would say like 60% of the student body will take a, that course at some time.